Hi, it's Nell, and today I am going to be repotting my Dracaena lemon lime. So stick around for that. If you like videos about gardening, both indoors and out, be sure to hit subscribe because I post videos on a regular basis here on YouTube, and I have plenty in the archives for you to check out. So I would love to have you subscribe and come back. And I usually start my videos in another part of my garden and then move over here. But today it's 102 and it's only May 5th. Ah, happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way. We have so many Mexican restaurants here in Tucson and so many places which sell tequila, but can't go to any of them because it's 2020. <laughs> anyway, it's a little warm today, but I just felt like getting some things repotted. So I thought that I would share them with you. And as always, there will be more details and links to materials used in the blog post, which will be in the description box right below. I got this Dracaena lemon lime uh, back when I lived in Santa Barbara and I don't know if you can see there are three stems in here. I got them in two inch pots and they were teeny teeny tiny and they've grown quite a bit. Um, lost a lot of their coloration over time. You can see the lemon lime is up there. It's much less vibrant compared to my lemon twist here. But um, I like it none. I like it nonetheless, and it's been in this pot for a long time now. I brought this with me from Santa Barbara. I couldn't bring any of my big plants, only plants about this size. Oh, I take that back. The only larger plant I brought was my three-trunked, you know, ponytail palm. But the uh, the roots are coming out of the bottom of the pot, which I will show you. So it is time to repot this plant and it is as I said May so spring summer into early fall are great times to replant house plants just try and avoid the winter time if you can because it is their time to rest just so you can see the bottom there's a lot of drain holes in this pot as there are in most house plant pots and there are fine roots coming out of every hole so this plant will be happy to be transplanted, to, to be repotted, and also to have some new soil, because I don't think it's had any fresh soil in a while. Ooh. And the average height that the, the, the average tallest height that a Dracaena lemon lime gets indoors is about seven to eight foot tall. Um, so if you have a taller one, you're gonna use the same mix. It'll just be a little different you know procedure because you're working with a bigger plant i just repotted my seven foot dracaena lisa so i'm not sure if that video will post before this one but that will give you an idea of how to repot a larger dracaena this is a smaller one it is in a six inch pot and i am going up to an eight inch pot now i am going to talk about the mix i am going to use so here are the ingredients for this repotting project. I'm using a good organic potting soil. I am using for this Ocean Forest by Fox Farm. I also use Happy Frog by Fox Farm, or sometimes I mix them. This is perlite and pumice, both aid in, in the drainage. I prefer pumice because it, it is chunkier and it doesn't have nearly as much dust as perlite, but I use the perlite for the seed starting mix. So. I'm just trying to use it up. And then this is a good local organic compost. And because I'm only potting up two eight inch plants, I just decided to mix everything up in this pail here so you can see what the mix looks like. So this mix is very loose. It's aerated, but it's rich too. So plant is gonna be very happy and you can see this one has a lot of holes in it too. So I just cut a piece of a paper bag. It just keeps the soil from falling out of, of the mix. So that is 
the uh, story on the mix. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna gently squeeze this and it should, it should come, come out pretty easily. These smaller plants are generally not too bad to do. Oh my gosh, I forgot my tub truck. Oops, here we go. Sometimes when you think they're gonna come out easy, they don't. Here we go. I just watered it. Oh, by the way, I just watered it this morning because it's so hot. So I wanted it to be moist coming out of here. All right, as you, as you can see how, how moist it is. So I'm going to, so what I do is I have to fill the pot up to about here with mix just to be able to raise the root ball up just below the rim of the pot. So I'm gonna get the soil in here and I'll be right back with you. Oh, and I just realized I completely forgot to tell you the portions that I used um, for the mix. I, you know, it's gonna vary for you depending on what size pot you're doing, but I used approximately three quarters potting soil and then a quarter of the perlite and the pumice mixture. And where is, oh, and then I put a bowl full of the, of the compost in. So that was my, my portion, but you could just use a really good potting soil if that's all you have, or potting soil and some perlite, that would be just fine. Some commercial potting soils tend to be a little bit heavier so it's nice to add in a little perlite or as I prefer, you know, pumice to up, up, up the ante on the drainage and aeration factor. So I got the tub truck and I relatively cleaned up the mess, but I'm just gonna be making more of a mess. So just gonna loosely, this root ball is not that tight. It just, just really needed some new soil. I'm just gently nudging nudging some roots apart at the base and i'm going to put it right in there just like that and then this one is going to be so happy to get some new soil okay so it's the usual old filling in process it's called see if you can get more mix in the pot than on the table <laughs> Oh, well, that's okay. Oh, and in nature, when growing outside, you need to, when these plants are growing outside, they can get up to like 15 feet tall. So this one hasn't have started to develop too much of a trunk on it. And I don't think I've done a care video. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to do that. It was growing in really low light in Santa Barbara, so that's why it lost a lot of its coloration. I didn't have as much light in my house there because I lived really close to the ocean so there was a lot of fog and uh, but here I have a lot of light so I might put it in a little in a little brighter spot here and see if some of that color coloration will come back okay so I just need to do a couple more trowel folds and then I am going to top it with some worm compost okay almost done here <laughs> Easy, huh? The smaller plants are so much less work to to uh, repot in. Also, I had I had the mix already done, you know, because I figured they're small plants. So just get it already mixed up because it's too hard to mix it up in these smaller pots. Okay, so this is a local uh, worm compost produced by some urban farmers here in Tucson. It's great, it's really rich. I, I have been composting, I have been worm comp composting all my house plants. That's what, that's, it. that's what I do in spring. This one is really nice and rich and moist, it's gorgeous. So I'm anxious to see how my plants re react to it in a couple months. It's a slow acting one. So I put maybe a quarter of an inch on, a quarter to a third of an inch, you wanna go Easy, easy does it on the worm compost because it is 
very concentrated, strong. But you know, these plants grow outside in their natural environments. So these uh, compost, and, compost and worm compost is, you know, fine you know, for them too. I also use um, Eleanor's VF11 on my house plants because this is such a dry climate and it's such a long growing season here in, you know, Tucson. So I water my house plants about three times a year with Eleanor's VF11. All these things are in my, um, or similar things are in my Amazon shop. You'll find it under soils and essentials or under houseplant essentials, I think. But um, I've used worm gold compost too. But you know, since I discovered this, you know, local one, as long as they keep making it, there's no going back for now. So I just want to tell you what I'm gonna do with this plant right now. I wet the bottom layer of the soil. So that's already a bit damp. And so after I repot my other two plants, I am going to, I'm gonna water them all at the same time, make sure it's thorough, it drains out, and then they can go back in the house into their spots. I just wanted to jump in and present day today is august 31st i repotted this plant in early may so just so you could see how it is doing has some lovely new growth coming there and i wanted to point out some of the brown tips on this plant something like that is in reaction to the dry air our homes tend to be dry, especially in the winter time, but I live in Tucson, Arizona now, and it is very dry, so this plant does have a lot of tips on it, but that is indicative of Dracaenas. Also, another plant that does, I mean, most plants do that, but it's really um, common in Dracaenas. My Dracaena marginata has quite a few brown tips, and also, the ponytail palm does that. All right, well, it takes more time to get everything, you know, set up and mixed and going than it actually does to repot the plant. <laughs> but maybe next spring I will do a care video on this and we can see how it has, you know, progressed along with its, its uh, new soil, new pot, and the worm composting. So again, ch check the blog post for more details, the links, all that good stuff, um, because I do a blog post that goes along with almost every video, 99.999% of them, so you'll find more information there. So I hope you have found this video on repotting a Dracaena lemon lime to be helpful. It's really very easy to do. And, and you know what? I have a lot more videos coming your way, so stay tuned for those. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. You know I appreciate them. Now let's get into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching. And there's one other thing I want to tell you is every Thursday on my Instagram, I post an IGTV. So if you want a short video, head over to Instagram, Joyous Garden, and you'll find another video waiting for you.